Oh, what a difference a few years of high inflation and high crime makes. Well, it looks like Joe Biden is losing ground everywhere. A new NBC poll shows that Biden's job approval rating among black voters has slipped from 80% in 2021, very high, to 63% now. Meanwhile, Trump is performing historically well among black voters. A new Washington Post analysis of a number of polls provided some pretty interesting insight. Joining me now is Scott Bolden, an attorney and former chair of the Washington, D.C. Democratic Party, and Jack Brewer, founder of the Jack Brewer Foundation. Scott, it's great to have you back on set with me. It's been a while. <laughs> um, what has Joe Biden done to help the black community. Well, we've got historical low unemployment. Uh, he's certainly the American Rescue Plan Act and the Anti-Inflation Act and the Infrastructure Act created jobs also, but wealth in regard to African Americans. You know, now, real, listen, real median household income has declined across all demographic groups, yeah, including African Americans. Home American. ownership has certainly increased, and putting a black female Supreme Court justice as well as having a person of color as a vice president are important to African American voters. I must tell you, I looked at that poll. The non-white support for Biden has slipped into the 60s, but African-American voters still are in the high 80s, if you will. I looked at that line. So I'm not sure that African-American voters are leaving Biden, and they certainly aren't going to leave Biden to go to so the you GOP. So you think things are going pretty well? No, I don't. I don't. But compared to having a GOP president or Donald Trump, I think I'll go with Biden's wisdom Let's and his experience now, I, I over that I understand the day. wisdom and experience, but sure. the, the numbers don't lie. Jack Brewer, the the real Real median household income, which measures your buying power and where you are, you know, vis-a-vis, -vis, you know, where you were two years ago, it's devastating right now. I mean, under Trump, it, we grew at about, I guess it was 7,000, and now it's down below where it was pre-COVID. So you're, you're worse off now than you were in December of 2019 in terms of your household income and what you can buy with it. To me, that's devastating for everyone. For everyone, but particularly the poorest of the poor, childhood poverty in the United States of America increased 120 percent, Laura. That is historical highs, and it should be embarrassing to all of us. When you look at African-American young children, 84 percent of African-American young children are, are not proficient in reading. 85 percent are not proficient in math. So to sit here and say that African-Americans are doing well, I mean, that's just a fantasy. Maybe those that are in power, maybe those politicians that want to use you know, race baiting to fundraise and raise, raise money. Maybe those people are doing well, but African Americans in the community, I'm there every day serving in African American communities, helping young fatherless kids. And I can tell you right now, they're struggling in school and they are not doing well in this economy. This is hurting the poorest of the poor, which is why we now have over 15 million Americans living in poverty. We should be embarrassed behind that. Well, we should, we should, I'll, I'll let you jump in here, but the illegal immigration issue alone, the sheer volume of people that have been allowed to walk into our country declaring, you know, we want to be in a, a side leave and then most of it's just economic migration, that puts downward pressure on wages, especially for those entering the workforce for the first time. Are you concerned about those numbers? 7.7 .7 million people just announced last Friday have come in. Yeah, and I... I support the New York City mayor who says, listen, we need more federal leadership. We need more uh, uh, troops and money and resources at the border. But here's where here's the real issue. Why are these millions and hundreds of thousands of folks coming here for the American dream? They didn't stop coming under Trump. He may have housed them in Mexico, but they were still coming. No, they blocked. They, they almost shut it down the last year. No, and I, half. I agree. But uh, they were uh, the Democrats them in didn't want it shut down. No, I mean, no. but, but Scott, you know, Biden wants mm -hmm. there basically to be no limit on the number of people coming into the country. But it's not really about Biden. It's about the big donors who are supporting Biden. The, right now, this but, week, big Bay Area plutocrats are, are supporting Joe Biden. Country. Why do you think they're supporting him? They're supporting him because... Why do the big money people of Silicon Valley want Biden so much? What about, well, what about him is so good for the big donors? Well, because they believe in his policies. They believe in Bidenomics. They believe in 13.5 million jobs being Do they believe in higher approved. wages for people, you uh, think? Of course they do. Oh, they do? Oh, they Why do, do they want all those people coming into the country? Well, then? because, listen, the economy is a challenge right now. I'm not going to defend the economy. It's mm -hmm. bad for all of us, if you will. But I know one thing. I know the Democrats and whoever's in the White House is working hard to address it. There's a year plus to go before the election. And you're right. It's going to be about those kitchen table issues. And the Democrats have a lot of work to do 
in this regard. Yeah, gas it's prices, more than jobs. Yeah, gas prices, as we hmm. just uh, noted in California, are up at six dollars a gallon. Yeah. Uh, gas. I mean, oil prices could be a hundred and fifty dollars a barrel by next spring. That's what one top analyst was saying yesterday, given what's going on. To me, Jack, again, these are kitchen table issues. You can feel all you want about what a great guy Biden is and whatever you, know, whatever you think about Trump, but the, the numbers are what the numbers are. You can't spin them. They are. You can't spin the numbers, and people are not incentivized to work across the board in this country anymore. And we need to change that mentality. We need to rejuvenate our youth. We need to teach Americans how to win again. We've, we've forgotten how to win. The reason why people are coming to this coming to this country and flooding our borders is because they realize that we're winning. But when you talk to folks on the left and Democrats, they're pushing a narrative of, 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 of complacency. They're pushing a narrative of victimization. You're not a victim living in the greatest country on earth. We need to change our tone and teach our kids how to step up and win games well, again. And that's well, and, and that's we, where we need to go. And that's the message that quick. our country yeah, needs. What do you do, no do, you do with an economy that has produced 13.5 million jobs? What do you do? You just ignore that and say life is well, bad, the economy is bad? 66% of the country say we're going in the wrong direction? Because the messaging, there's a, there's a disconnect between his do you performance. Think it's not a, you think it's not policy, Scott? I'm being serious. You think it's it's a messaging problem. I think it's you a messaging problem. You think the problem. dollar does go as far as it did I, three years I, ago? I don't think so, but I do this, think this. I think the average American isn't feeling the impact of all of these policy programs. Because they're not working. Well, they are working. How are they How working? You, you're $13.5 million. You keep do, saying do, that. Do, if wages aren't going well, up, you can have they're all the still jobs working. you want. They're still working. Unemployment is the we're lowest it's been we're not in decades. Yeah, but so, we're not back where we well, were But you can't COVID. ignore that, though. So if the messaging issue, they're and ready. it's about Americans feeling it, they're not feeling it, there's a gap. Not just in okay. messaging, but they have to feel it. Biden's got to do a better job of connecting the dots. Oh, I think the crime Middle issue Middle class is people. Problem. Lord, middle class people cannot go out and get a mortgage right now because yeah. mortgage rates are too high. They yeah, have we gotta to go. rent. We gotta people go, can't but you're own right. these days. Yeah, this well, economy the, the, is terrible. And it's not all particularly for black people. He inherited a pandemic it, yeah. economy. No, no, the economy was poised to take off. You're not going to get away with that one. All right, Scott, Jack, great to see you both. All right.